was right, right around the end of May when things just started um, going bananas. I've had several people wanting me to write a book. I was on the Tamron Hall show. I was on the Today Show. I was on Good Morning America. I was on all these different things. And I got to speak with Kevin Hart. For his new movie, Fatherhood? Yeah, for fatherhood. And with the pandemic, I had some time on my hands and, uh, you know, the commitment wasn't great for how to tie a tie. I thought, I think I'm pretty good at it. So <laughs> I can go ahead and just pass that knowledge along without, you know, too much work, just a couple minute video. And uh, that was the first one. Then how to shave was my second one. I just try to do the best I can. And, you know, I, I do think I want to make being a dad cool. Your top three best dad jokes. My son said he didn't understand cloning. I told him that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting big. So my guest today is a fellow dad. You know, I really appreciate uh, this dad conversation. And you got to know in this interview, especially for our first generation cash flow, faith based millionaires or aspire to be a millionaire, we're going to have some fantastic dad jokes in this conversation. And uh, not for me, though. I, I'm not originating that. But uh, our guest today is uh, Rob Kearney, uh, who was at 13 years old, had his father leave him with him and his seven siblings. And uh, with not much support, he vowed that when he grew up, he would figure out a way to help others like him. And years later, after marrying and successfully raising two children of his own, Rob is doing just that and has become known as the Mr. Rogers for adults. And what I just found out, He's actually married to a Filipina, so he's family. <laughs> so that being said, welcome to the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, Rob Kenny. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good, Matt. Thanks for having me on. So I uh, actually stumbled across your YouTube channel about a year ago, about a year ago. Yeah, a little over a year ago, because I was wrapping my mind around saying, "Yo, Patrick, my 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 mentor says." I'm at 13,000 subs, I'm at 12,000 subs, and this guy comes across and just kills it on YouTube. What am I doing wrong? And he showed me your, your stuff, and it's like, it is even worse. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and but it, it was a good, it was a good um, position where he's coming from because, you know, sometimes we just try so hard to do, uh, to, to build a YouTube channel, and you just had a blessing. So what was your breakthrough moment when you said, you know what, let me do some videos for YouTube. What was your breakthrough moment to do that? Yeah, yeah, I thought of it a few years ago. And uh, honestly, I wasn't doing it to switch careers. I've, I've uh, been in sales for almost 30 years and I'm 57 now. And I didn't plan on switching careers or getting famous or, you know, I thought I was just going to help 30 or 40 people. Uh, and it, so it's, it's a God thing, you know, God had got a hold of this and just, you know, he, he blessed it. And I'm just trying to, you know, do the best I can to represent him well. Um, really, I, you know, I didn't, yeah, well, I, I can't give people were coming to me and, Hey, how did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't have an answer for you. You know, God just blew this thing up. So. Amen. It, when, um, I, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. How, how did you meet your wife? She's from the Philippines and she's from a local Norte. So how did yeah. you meet your wife? Yeah, at Boeing. Uh, she, um, we were working together. That was, you know, a lifetime ago when I was a drafter. We've been married for 30 years now. Um, I used to be a drafter at Boeing and she's one of eight kids and I'm one of eight kids. She's actually second oldest. I'm the second youngest in my family. So, you know, she tells me what to do. She bosses me around and, you know, cause she's used to her younger siblings <laughs> and telling them what to do. But anyway, yeah. So her dad uh, was in the U S coast guard. And so that's how she got her citizenship. And she had to come here before her 21st birthday um, in order to get her citizenship. Um, and yeah, so that, yeah, uh, it's a long story, but I mean, uh, <laughs> trying to keep it short for you. That's great. That's great. So, I mean, your, your first video was how to tie, was it how to tie a tie? That was that your first video? It was. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. I thought of the idea of the channel a few years ago and then with the pandemic, I had some time on my hands and the, you know, the commitment wasn't great for how to tie a tie. I thought, I think I'm pretty good at it. So <laughs> I can go ahead and just pass that knowledge along without, you know, too much work, just a couple minute video. And yeah, that was the first one. Then how to shave was my second one. Uh, and then, yeah, then I started it April 1st, started my channel April 1st and first video was April 2nd and then May, end of May was when it went viral. Wow. And folks, he's at 3.54 million subs right now. Um, I, I need to ask you this for any recommendation, 
to somebody who says, hey, dad, how do I start a YouTube channel? What would your advice then be? Maybe we need to start a version two of this book, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, if you if you watch my videos, they're not fancy. You know, I'm I'm still recording them on my phone. I just now recently got a lav lav mic so people can hear me when I'm outside because you know I I live in a modest uh, <laughs> neighborhood and I'm trying not to bother my neighbors or draw attention to myself, so I talk kind of quiet. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I finally added a lav mic and got that to work with my phone. Um, yeah, so I don't, I mean, my, my editing, I just do it on an app on my phone. YouTube makes it pretty easy to upload, you know? So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to tell you anything fancier than that. Cause that's all I knew. <laughs> Wow. You know, it, it, there's a old uh, book out there. It's been around for a minute. It's called uh, the millionaire next door. And uh, what Dr. Thomas Stanley says in that book, that millionaires live in your average and ordinary neighborhoods. You'd never know them, but they're millionaires uh, because they save throughout their life. But the interesting fact there, he says the majority of them are either executives or they're in sales. And uh, one of the things I teach my kids is that if you know how to sell, you know how to negotiate, you'll never be unemployed you know, for yeah. the rest of your life. You'll always get find a job. You'll always find opportunities. So, yeah. um, uh, so dad, how do I sell? If you're into, yeah. <laughs> So here, here's another funny thing, a God thing, you know, I, uh, I'm a bit of an introvert. And so, uh, and I didn't have my job. I share the story in my book a little bit about how I came to faith. I, uh, my wife was going off to work. I needed a job. And I went back to a, a former employer and said, Hey, you know, I need a job. And they said, well, we don't really have work for you. We like you as an employee. Would you consider sales? I'm like, I just need a job. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything at that point. And so, I got into sales and I was like, Lord, you're going to have to help me with this. I don't, you know, this isn't, I don't feel comfortable with it. And 30 years later, I'm still doing it. So uh, I found out, you know, I don't have to, because I only, I don't have to give big presentations in, in front of large groups. I'm just talking and connecting with two or three people. And I think I've always been fairly good at that. And so, and I try to be real and try to, you know, own my mistakes when I mess up. I don't, try to pass the buck and I, you know, try to get back to my customers right away. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've had some of my customers that I ha I've had for over 20 years just because I, you know, do my best to take care of them. Is it like inside sales? What, what, what type of sales? Uh, was, what the yeah, product? it's actually, so it's office supplies. I actually um, oh. worked for, yeah, it was a small, it was a small company I started out with and then got into, and then uh, one, another company bought us out and then recently office Depot bought us out. Oh, wow. uh, uh, two and a half years ago, coming up on three years. And they've been great. Office Depot has been wonderful. Actually, I got to tell you, because when they first bought us, I was like, oh, no, I'm going to start wearing a red shirt and they're going to change everything. But they haven't. They've been they've left us alone. They started this new thing across the country and they're called they call us the Federation and <laughs> pretty cool. And so they're buying up local office supply companies across the country and letting them run as what you know what made them good and they're they haven't come in and messed with us and let us just kind of do our thing wow it's interesting on the mergers and acquisitions how usually it's cleaning house exactly uh, that's you know? what i was concerned about yeah. <laughs> so so it's interesting because oftentimes uh rob the people think about sales they think that it's a win-lose situation you know and and what is your experience now in, in sales 30 years what has been your approach to sales yeah, I just try to be as transparent as I possibly can and own my mistakes and, you know, try to walk alongside people and try to be a liaison for them, you know, and try to help them understand that I'm I'm fighting for you, too. You know, if you feel like we're, we could do something better, I'm going to go to bat for you. And so a lot of my customers end up just becoming my friends. And so, you know, I'll, I'll be there and somebody calls them and it's, oh, it's a salesman. And I said, well, you know, actually, I, I'm I'm a salesman. And they go, you're not a salesman, Ralph. <laughs> Well, I am though, you know, so it's, it's nice to not be known as a salesman when you actually are a salesman. Sure. So, so, so that, let's say I get involved in sales, you know, and because, you know, oftentimes it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's a journey that a lot of people didn't learn in school. So, so dad, how do I deal with rejection? How do I deal with when people tell me no? How, how would you, uh, how would you uh, answer that? Yeah, that's tough. You know, I didn't handle it very well early on. <laughs> that was hard uh, to deal with because I felt like they were re rejecting me. But it's just part of the part of the process. And once you start getting a few victories under your belt, you know, uh, I've talked about on my channel about perspective. And I think one thing that's helped me with perspective is understanding that 
there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows and you just kind of got to ride them out. You're going to, you know, sometimes you're going to win an account and go, woohoo. And then you're going to lose account and go, oh no. Uh, you know, so I've tried to maintain, uh, you know, some sort of balance with that. Cause it's, it can be hard. I'm not going to, not going to lie. I'm human. You know, we all want to be liked. So it's hard to be rejected. As I've watched your videos and, you know, obviously uh, I love uh, watching your thank you video. You just see your genuine heart and like, oh, my gosh, I know what's going on in my life, but it's happening. And just thank you. Um, yeah. But it seems like your 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 demeanor is like even keel. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're the type of guy that gets too high in his highs and too low on his lows. But I, I can't imagine that growing up with uh, uh, seven other siblings, eight total, and your father leaving you that you didn't have any feelings of uh, anger and abandonment uh, there. And so, so dad, how did you deal with that? Uh, yeah, it was tough. And I share that in my book. I, I it took me a long time to forgive my dad. Um, and I, I still look back and go, ah, you know, if he had, we had some stability because I, I was pretty good at football and I ended up playing in college uh, a little bit, but I see other people, you know, and have every advantage. And I was like, I'm working, I'm running away from, you know, as soon as high school is out, I'm running to the car wash to work, to try to, you know, fend for myself. And so there was definitely some resentment that I felt like, uh, yeah, it was hard, but, you know, and I, I shared the struggle that I had in the book, you know, I, I took me a long time to forgive him until I heard the saying that said, you know, uh, you unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping that other person <laughs> is, you know, paying the price for it. And really, my dad had moved on and I'm it's killing me. You know, I'm chewing on it and tur turning it over in my mind and I, I needed to let it go. And once I did, yeah, that's that's when the real growth started for me. So, so Ralph, have you have you circled back with him? Have you reconciled with him? I did. Yeah, I share that in the book, too. He's since passed. So um, by the time he uh, he kind of came to me and asked for forgiveness, I'd already forgiven him. So it was kind of a moot point. And as a as a man of faith, you know, um, I've been forgiven much. And so and that's what I told him. I said, Dad, I've been forgiven much. I, I can't hold that against you. You know, I, I forgave you prior because, you know, if you wait for somebody to come around and ask for forgiveness, you may never get it. And, and so I was I, I'm thankful that I was able to to forgive him before he even asked. Yeah, and it's not in your control. What is in con what is in your control is the fact that you can extend forgiveness first. You yeah, know that you exactly. that you're doing that. So when when you are, um, so what was your what was your big break? Rap? Remind everybody here because you know we we all read it and remind everybody what was your big break? What was your big boom? You got exposure. Somebody shouted you out. What what happened? Yeah. It, uh, so since that time, some of the names that have been <laughs> that have reshared my stuff, some of the Kardashians and then, you know, it, it, some names are just beyond me that people are actually mentioning me in their stories. Uh, yeah. So uh, it was right, right around the end of May when things just started um, going bananas. And then next thing you know, people want me to write. It was, you know, I've had several people wanting me to write a book. And then I had, uh, you know, I was on the Tamron Hall show. I was on the Today Show. I was on Good Morning America. I was on all these different things. And I got to speak with Kevin Hart uh, even recently. So it's been a wild ride. Yeah, for, for, for his new movie, Fatherhood? Yeah, for Fatherhood. Um, they reached out to me and wanted me to yeah give my take on it and got, I got a chance to to talk to him. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I, you know, it's just, it, it's so far beyond, especially as an introvert, you know, I, I'm just, uh, I feel like, uh, a little kid going, what am I doing? I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. It's, uh, but God has given me this platform to just try to promote kindness and try to be good to people, you know, and that's really what I'm trying to do. And I think during the pandemic, uh, we were all, you know, wanted community and we wanted, uh, some just simple feel good type of stuff. And I think that that had to, had a lot to do with why it went viral. Yeah. And by the way, it's not like you stopped. You, you've just kept going. Um, so let's, let's talk about that. You know, uh, when we, when we were locked down, you know, we, we had a saying around our YouTube channel, around our community, around our business, which, which along the lines of if you've got time now on your hands, and now because of either stimulus checks or tax refunds or the fact that because of the CARES Act, Trump allowed you to take money out of your 401k with that early withdrawal penalties. Uh, now you got you know, access to a little bit of capital. Now that you got time, now that you got money, 
And we were saying, if you don't learn a new skill, a new habits, a new direction in your life, it's not that you didn't lack opportunity. You just lacked discipline to find out what yeah. that was. So what, um, so, so Rob, for you, what did you, outside of YouTube channel, what did you learn about yourself, the, the people that you love and care about, your community? What did you, lo- the good, bad, the ugly, what did you guys learn throughout the lockdowns and the pandemic? Yeah, you know, it, uh, kind of the same as everybody else, I guess. The import- what, what's important, you know, I guess what's really important in life and um, relationships and, you know, trying to be good, pe- be good people, you know, get a lot of chance to think. And, I, you know, during the pandemic, we would go out and walk our dogs a lot more, you know, I'd run out and, and I was waving at anybody, you know, I, I didn't care who it was. I'm and like, hey, you. man, <laughs> just, you know, people drive by in a car and like, hey, you know, uh, it, it, you know, I it's just trying to be, yeah, I wanted to connect, I guess, you know, I missed the connection with people. Um, yeah. And I think that really solidified that in my mind, the importance of, uh, yeah, connecting with people and telling people that you love them, tell them how you feel about them. You know, um, I think that's important. I've always tried to do that, but I think it really, uh, really put a spotlight on that for me. Very good. Yeah, you know, let's let's talk about fatherhood. I think. It, did you ever think that you'd be the face, one of the faces of its category of fatherhood? You, right? That uh, <laughs> that, 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 that you're now a you know, God, has, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> So, I, yeah, I'm just trying to do the best I can. And, you know, I, I do think um, I, I want to make being a dad cool, you know, or, you know, to the best of my ability to kind of get people to think long term, some dads that think short term and run after shiny objects. I did a video on that, you know, about keeping the perspective of keeping a long term perspective, because I can speak from my own experience of my dad you know, leaving when I was 14, I was 14 for a time, then I was 18, then I was 25. Now I'm in my 50s, you know, time goes by. And I'm trying to get guys to see that, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, you're getting a cool opportunity to influence these people that are in your (laughs) these kids, you know, that are in your house for a short time, and then they're gone. My kids are my best friends now. You know, we talk every day. I, uh, you know, they're they're advising me on stuff. I'm advising them on stuff on adulting still. That's, that's fine. I, I like how you put in your book here. Married with two adult children, parentheses, and they still talk to him. Uh, li- 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 living <laughs> in <it>. Seattle. <laughs> Just talking to my daughter earlier today. I'm sure my son's trying to call me right now because I'm going to go see him. He's out in Virginia. I'm going to go see him on uh, on Thursday. I'm flying out to see him. You know, as as a dad, you know, I uh, we we put it in three different categories. You know, there's a phase of father fatherhood where, I think, from the uh, age of you know to all the way until about 10, 11 years old, it's like my dad's awesome. We call that the idolized phase, right? My dad's the hero. My dad's stronger than your dad. My dad's faster than your dad. You know, my dad's richer and whatever, right? And uh, until about preteens, when those hormones start kicking in, and then dad's got to lay in a little bit more discipline, right? Yeah. And uh, we call that the demonized phase. <laughs> so, like, my dad doesn't know nothing, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then hopefully they come out of it, you know, somewhere in their 20s when they're starting to adult, adulting things. And then they start humanizing. They say, you know, dad, oh, that's what my dad said. Oh, that's what my dad. You know, any, any words of guidance for fathers and dads out there? Dad, how do I become a better dad through all those three phases? What, one thing I've always tried to share is um, asking your kids for forgiveness. I, I, I think I got ahead of the game. I knew I wasn't perfect, you know, <laughs> right from the get go when the kids were little and I made a mistake, you know, um, you know, when we say bedtime prayers, I would go, you know, and I'd ask the Lord to forgive me and I'd help. I, I wanted them to be able to understand that I was doing the best I could and I'm not perfect. And I think as men, sometimes we try to put up this facade that we got it all together, you know, and then. Once your kids get to a certain age, they go, well, wait a second, dad, <laughs> dad maybe doesn't have it all together like he tried to pretend he did. You know, I, you know, I, I think there's a balance there. You got to, you know, be strong when maybe there's some, you know, you're shaking inside, but you got to be strong and act like you got it together. I'm not talking about that, but I think there isn't, you know, I think it is important to help your kids understand that you're doing the best you can too, you know. God. And we're all learning the whole, you know, the whole way through. And hopefully I'll forgive you when 
when you mess up and you forgive me when I mess up, you know, I think, I think that was really important because I, and I did hear people say, Hey man, you, when you get, just wait, wait till your daughter gets in the, you know, uh, teenage years, you know, you're going to hate. I was like, that never happened for me. You know, I'm just going to be honest with you. We, I stayed close to him as best I could. Um, you know, obviously I'm not pretending it was all, <laughs> yeah. all perfect, but you know, I think they understood our heart for them, my, me and my wife. You know, that's such an important thing because, uh, you know, I'm, I, uh, I have a blend, I have a blend family. So I sadly got married and divorced and I always ask for forgiveness for the kids. I said, listen, I, I made a mistake of picking wrong. You know, listen, you, you, you were the best thing that happened in that relationship, but you know, your mother wasn't right for me. And, and sadly you have to forgive me because we run our homes two different ways. You know, uh, I, I believe uh, heavily a lot in the entrepreneurship, free enterprise and capitalism. And the other side yeah. believes a lot in free, freeze this and depend on lean, lean, lean on the government. And so yeah. so when you when they come to my house, it's like unraveling it. And by the time I unravel it, it's already Thursday <laughs> and they got to go back yeah. to the other house. So that whole accordion stuff and, 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 and Rob, there's sadly the, the blended family phenomenon is growing because people are picking wrong. So so my question to you, Rob, dad, how do I pick the right life partner? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, well, I, again, I go back to being, you know, a man of faith. Uh, I think it's important to be on the same page with that. And like like you said, you know, capitalists, uh, you know, I'm a capitalist myself. I, I think, you know, I want to earn what I, you know, and I don't want people taking it from me just because, you know, they feel like, well, you you have so much. Well, then you should. You should. Well, let me, you know, I, I'm, I believe in charity. I give I give money away to charity. I, but I don't think somebody that can't balance their budget should take their money, take the money because they can't figure out how to balance their budget. OK, so well, let's just raise the taxes. Well, come on, you know, balance the budget first. Show me you're good with the money. Then maybe I'll, you know, but as long as you can't balance the budget, why do I want to give more money away? Anyway, getting off of it, I, I think it's important. There's a stewardship issue there. Right? Yeah, right, right. Absolutely. And I think, uh, yeah, I think it's very important to be on the same page and have an out the same outlook, um, you know, that life is temporary too. you know, we're here for just a short time, you know, I, I think it's important to, to keep that. Um, and that's been on my mind a lot lately, as far as understanding how temporary things are, you know, uh, my kids, my kids are, my daughter's almost 30, you know, uh, my daughter's 29 and my son's 26. It, it went like that, you know, they were with me for a short time and now they're off doing their own thing and I'm getting old. <laughs> you know, I used to, I used to be a pretty good athlete, you know, and you peak and then you, now I'm just getting worse every year I get, you know, I can't even, <laughs> you know, so anyway, it's, uh, it's hard to deal with, uh, with the aging thing. If you don't have the proper perspective of understanding that I know where I'm going when I die, because Jesus, you know, yeah, gotcha. And, and that's a, that's a very interesting thing because I'm always, I have two younger ones. So, so, uh, I have three older ones, 25 years old and 20 years old. And then we, uh, my wife, we're blended family. So she had a, she was a single mom. She, uh, she at one and a half years old, he's 10 now. So he's 10 and we had a kid together. He's two. And one of the things I, one of the things I shared with the three older ones, well, actually four, but the fourth one wasn't paying attention. He was, he was, you know, seven, eight years old at the time, but he really wasn't paying attention. But I told the three other ones, listen, you got to forgive me uh, because I, I, you know, I chose wrong. But you guys understand too as well, going forward to manage expectations, you can't get mad at your youngest brother, your baby brother who was just born today, that by the time he's five years old, he's probably going to have access to, you know, technology and cell phones and activities and opportunities that you didn't have at five, six, seven, eight years old right. uh, because your dad was a much different financial and personal and spiritual faith-based experience uh, at, at that point. So, um, but with that, with that being said, um, how, how does, you know, how does somebody stay strong to their values as a young adult today? Because so many different messages are taught in the school system. So many messages are taught in, t I think that the stat was 60%, 70% of all youth today get their news from social media. Like yeah. we, like we grew up watching, watching the news and reading a newspaper and that was somewhat, independent and that was still journalism whereas today it's all you know whether called fake news or propaganda how do how, how that how do i assess what values and principles are valid today in this crazy society where so many different things are being thrown at you yeah <laughs> Woo! you are <laughs> you're on fire with the <laughs> uh i have to 
to go back to being a man of faith, you know, doing right. the best I can you know praying you know uh, i try to I, I yeah i share this in my book too about my alone time i do try to keep that alone time in the morning you know to set my mind right um because you know it does the bible does say to that man doesn't live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of god and so if we're not feeding on that daily you know you're actually starving you know and so i think if you can look at it like that, I, I always try to get things to where I can get my own head around. It. It's like, okay, well, that's pretty simple, you know. Uh, okay, well, if I'm not eating that every day, then I'm starving, you know. Um, so I think that 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 is so important. And my heart goes out to you know families that you know are broken or what have you, uh, because there's access. You know, when I I'm older than you, but when I you know was younger, probably same for you. You had to go seek out some of the stuff that now it's just a click away, you know, it's just a click away from just horrible stuff that if uh, kids are filling their minds with that stuff, uh, you know, and if there's nobody kind of guarding the house to protect them from clicking on that stuff, uh, it scares me. It's a little bit scary because, you know, the, yeah, what's out there that could influence them um, in a bad way. I think it was oh, the the premise and the the premise of your brand and the premise of what you're building, you know, Dad. How do I, which kind of encouraged me to say, ask questions throughout the rest of your life. Like there, there, there like there's never going to be a point where you shouldn't stop asking questions. Which was my mistake in my twenties, uh, leaving the military. I thought I knew everything. You know, sergeant in the Marines. I kind of was in charge. I had you know I was in charge of Marines. Went to you know different combat tours. I know a lot, and almost to thinking that I knew everything. But, you know, how, how do you, how do you uh, go about saying, okay, if you're in your 20s, you're raising a family, you're establishing a career, a business, where, where's, where, do, where do you rank the ability to ask deeper and deeper questions and what you just talked about earlier in your quality time and finding what those questions are? Where would you rank that in terms of priority as a father, as a dad, as, as, a, as a leader of the home? Yeah. Th thank, thank you for your service. First of all, I pre appreciate your service. Um, I, I don't take that lightly. You know, I'm very grateful for people that people that served. Um, I, uh, I'm always trying to grow. I think it's important. You mentioned the millionaire next door. I get my hands on anything and everything to try to read. I've read that, uh, you know, I read a lot of Dave Ramsey. Uh, I'm always trying to learn to, to better understand. And you're exactly right about the, you know, the millionaires in the area, you know, they're not flashy necessarily, but you just, you know, you put money away over a short, you know, a little, little by little, little by little. And next thing you know, you know, you've built a pretty nice nest egg. And that's kind of how we had planned to do it. Like I said, I wasn't planning on sh um, switching careers. I, I, we planned well and I was planning to just retire like uh, an average American, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, so I, I think all those things, the more you can learn, the better. And don't be ashamed to ask questions. You know, how, you're not born with the information. That's what I've tried to share pe with people on my channel is like, how would you know this? You know, how, how would you know it if you didn't have somebody to show you? So you shouldn't feel embarrassed for not knowing it. Yep. You know, uh, learn as much as you possibly can and don't be embarrassed that you don't know it. There's probably a reason why you, why you don't. Um, but if you keep putting it off and never want to ask the question, well, then you know, who are you hurting? You're hurting yourself by maybe the pride's getting in the way saying, uh, you know, I should know this, but there must have been a reason why you didn't, you know. I think, uh, Rob, you, you, you also say something very profound in your book. You talk about um, uh, questioning authority, you know, yeah. uh, you question authority. Where does it get to the point where it's questioning authority to learn, question authority, question authority, and then if you don't agree with authority, then what would you say, okay, if I don't agree with authority, because based on a lot of things that's going right now, for example, masks, vaccines, yeah. you know, lockdowns, you know, essential worker, non-essential worker, you know, you're questioning authority, questioning authority. When does it get, get to a point where you, then you start challenging, if you're not in agreement with it, based on your values and your principles, when then do you start challenging authority and, what, and how would you go about then challenging authority if you don't agree with it? Yeah, yeah, that's difficult in our time. You know, that we, we're also getting turned into pretzels with, uh, you know, you get canceled if you just right. want to have a discussion. You just want to have a discussion. Hey, let's just talk about this um, without, uh, you know, oh, I disagree with you. 
ah, you're gone. What? You know, I got to be able to talk about it so that we can reason through things. And the scriptures, God says, come now, let us reason together. You know, I believe that my faith is a reasonable faith. I, you know, I haven't checked my brains at the door. I've thought this through and I'm, you know, come to the conclusion that this is true, you know, and I want to know what the truth is. Uh, You know, who wants to be duped? I don't want to be duped, you know, and so the only way you can come to uh, the realization of that is if you, if we discuss things, you know, we should without, you know, belittling the other person, we should be able to discuss, well, why are we doing this again? You know, um, instead we, yeah, so we live in a real difficult time right now. I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough, tough answer. I think the questioning authority, you know, I don't think we're, uh, we should be rebel, re- rebellious just to be rebellious, you know, just to be a rebel so I can, cause it's cool to be a rebel. Well, no, you know, I think, but I think at the same time, we sh- you should question authority and say, well, but why are you doing this? I need a reason why. I can't just do this just because you're telling me I need to do it. I- show me, you know, show me why. And my daughter's very much that way. <laughs> she's uh, she's even said that, Dad, I'm, I can't just do this just because you tell me to. I-, I don't expect you to. Well, let's reason through it, you know, and figure out why I came to this conclusion, because I, I think it's important that we have that dialogue. You know, Rob, it's... Uh, um very important for a lot of people to then understand because when, when I was growing up, you know, the conversation about who to vote for, who to vote for, it really wasn't, you know, a conversation how to process that without realizing the impact. One of the greatest things we have in this country is the ability to vote. You know, uh, your wife being Filipino, I remember uh, uh, just watching our country uh, with, with Marcos and, uh, uh, and the Aquinos, Laban, you know, Laban, because they're fighting for the right to vote. Next, you know, uh, Kino, she gets voted, uh, Corazon Aquino, she gets voted in as the new president to out to, to kick out um, the Marcos family. And they got exiled to Hawaii with her shoe collection. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, so so that how do I learn how to vote? How do I know what par- how do I know what party that I should uh, that I should question and understand how how I should vote according to the answers to the questions I'm asking myself? How do I go about doing that? Yeah. Yeah. That's tough too. You know, and that's something I don't feel like we do a good job in our school system to, to teach people. You know, I learned a lot of things that I've never used <laughs> when I was in school. Uh, and now, so with my channel, I do try to do a lot of practical information and that's probably one I'll actually do. I should, oh. I should do one on how to vote. Cause I think it's, Im, it's important. Um, yeah. I, but I, one thing that scares me with that is but be an educated voter, <laughs> you know, just because you can vote and you go, you saw somebody on TV that you thought you might like, well, make sure you know what he stands for or he or she stands for before you, you know, go after their personality because there's ramifications, you know, we live in the uh, greatest country in the world, right? People are, sure. you know, climbing over the walls to get here. There's a reason why, but if you start changing the rules and stuff, you know, uh, it, you know, could quickly turn bad, you know, fairly, fairly quick. You start putting in the, putting the wrong people in the office, you know, and I, I told that to my daughter, I said, you know, I think we're, we've been spoiled. We've got it. We've had it so good for so long that we kind of maybe have lost sight of the fact that, man, you better make sure you got people in office that are, you know, making laws that align with what you, what you stand for. Yeah. Cause sometimes the, the negative voice and the, um, and, and the, the easier voice is a great recruiter. It's easier to listen to. You know, we'll give you all yeah. these free things. We'll roll things out of package. You don't got to do much. You know, chill, relax. I, I remember a Democrat back in, the, back in the 60s says, don't ask what your con- country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Yeah. But today, that wouldn't be, a, that wouldn't be that message from that party. <laughs> You know? Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. I, it's that, and that saddens me because it's gone. Yeah, we're some of the stuff that's being being foisted upon us. I guess it's like make sure that's really what you stand for. Because I don't, I don't know. Rob, I don't know if you heard the uh, CEO of our company, uh, Patrick, but David hosts a YouTube channel called Value Tame with over three million subs. But he put a pretty, a pretty, he put a pretty, uh, pretty interesting proposal out there. He says, uh, here's my new campaign. He says, let's talk about the reunited states of America, mm. right? Because we're the divided yeah. states of America. So, some of the re- right. so how do we 
get to be reunited? Well, because I've been part of a divorced family. And the reason why they got divorced is because the longer issues came around, the, the more distant they got, the more distant they got, the more distant, and things just started to blow, blow up. Um, and so the more they got together and hammered out those issues, the more things were able to be understood from both parties, even though they were differing in opinion, at least they understood, at least there was yeah. progress. So he puts out there, I'm putting my own money up, $5 million for former President Obama and Trump to sit down and have a long form interview. Yeah. That's one hour, one hour uh, debate. And the next hour, whatever you guys want to talk about. So three hours, five million bucks split between the two of you guys. And people out the woodwork, Rob, say, yeah, if that happens, I'll put my own $500,000. Yeah, I'll put my own 10000 Yeah, I'll put my own 100000 So I think he's raised like six, seven million dollars for these wow. two presidents to, 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 to sit down and, and, and hash it out. So, so, Dad, how do we overcome conflict? How, how, what's your best practices on how to overcome when you don't agree with an issue, a situation, or somebody? Yeah, yeah, that's difficult, man. You just keep throwing these hard. <laughs> you've inspired. You've inspired me, Dad. You inspired me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I think communication is, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I, this cancel culture where you know if you have a differing opinion, well, we can't hear from you. Well, wait, you know, as long as we're respectful, we should be able to have a dialogue. That's the only way you're going to learn. I think it's it's foolish to sit here and get a bunch of yes men around you and you just, oh yeah, you only tell, you know, you only hear one side. Well, how can you be, you know, you got to be exposed to everything and then make your choice. You know, I think that's super important. So I think communication, like you said, getting people together and being able to, you know, that's why debates, you know, a good debate and listen to both sides. And there's rules with a debate, you know, yeah. where you, you know, you don't belittle the other person, you just state some facts, you know, and he states some facts, and then you then you make your choice. I think that's, I think that's very important. And we've kind of gotten away from that. We don't, we're not allowing one side to be heard right now. Yep, it's not, you're right. It's not debates, it's attacks. And what you said earlier, if I don't agree with you, I cancel you just because I don't agree yeah. with you. It, 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 you can't say, um, I'm going to shout you down until you listen to me, but I can't listen to you. It, yeah. it, 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 it doesn't make sense yeah, that, that way. Work? How does that work in a marriage? <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. that's, I'm going to work in a marriage and kind of the same thing. You know, we need to be able to, yeah, in a calm way, be able to discuss our differences. And I, I want to wrap up these series of questions here around faith, because you know, obviously you're, you're walking of the faith-based man, and I, I really appreciate, I think that's something that, Sadly, it's very, very minimized today. And then if you say, hey, I'm faith-based, I'm a believer, you're shouted down like, you know, you know, like, that, like that's a bad thing, you know? Yeah. You know? So, so, you know, how, how do we as believers, how do we as those even considering, hey, I, I want to dial back into these values and principles that obviously stood the test time through the Bible, through the living word. How do I become a better uh, um, faith-based believer to honor God in all that I do, even though I have so many different pressures and distractions around me, how, how do I go about doing that, Rob? Yeah, I, again, I think it's all about the perspective of understanding that you're here temporarily. I think, you know, and as I've gotten older and seeing what, you know, I, you know, it, it won't be, I won't be here much longer. You know, you're not here for, and, but I think the Bible puts that in perspective and people say, oh, well, if there's a God, well, why is, why is there so much suffering? Well, the Bible answers that. It talks about why we're in the predicament that we're in, but, you know, yeah, but Jesus came to take care of that and he proved who he was by the resurrection. I, I you know, I, a lot of people debate all these peripheral things, abortion and all these different things, when the reality is Jesus died and he came back to life. And if you look at the people that have tried to explain that away and say, oh, well, you know, well, I, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. Come on, the swoon theory. If you look at all the different things of, uh, that would <laughs> people try to put the spin on how, what really happened, I think he rose from the dead, you know? And so he proved that he was somebody that I should follow. He proved all the stuff that he, claimed it validated it when he conquered death and paul says you know we're of all men most to be pitied if christ be not raised it's, we're fools we're you know <laughs> 
because yeah. we're sacrificing kind of this life for the fact that Jesus died and, and rose again and, you know, paid the penalty for my yeah. sin so that I, then the Bible says I can know that I have eternal life. When I die, I'm going to go be with him. So I think understanding that perspective and understanding that this is all temporary, yeah. it's all temporary. You know, you can get things might be going great, but you know what? <laughs> you're heading towards one, one day you're going to die we're all going to die. You know, we, we tend to kid ourselves and think that's way out there, you know, but you know, we're Rob, all heading there. <laughs> how do, how do I put myself in a, in a context of, you know, I, I'm, I'm a believer, but I just heard from so many other folks that it's just, it's not good for me to be wealthy. It's not good for me to be rich, you know, for, to be able to embrace success. Ah, I should just be meek. I should, I should not you know take that opportunity because I've seen you, Rob, when opportunity came your way, you embraced it and you doubled down on it. You, sh you yeah. led through a pandemic. You led, um, you, you lead, you're continuing to lead people who have questions in their life. That's why they go to the YouTube channel. That's why they read your book. That's why they follow you and they look up to you and why they follow you on, on all the social platforms. Um, what's, your, what's your thoughts about that in terms of uh, a faith-based believer being wealthy, successful, prosperous in such uh, yeah. troubled times? I talked about uh, money on my channel one time too. And I talked about, you know, it's, it's the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. I think money's a tool, you know, you, and you can help a lot more people if, if you have it uh, rather than if you just go, ah, you know, uh, you know, I, I think, I think God would want us to, you know, do use the abilities that he's given us. And then, yeah, then you can help that much more, many more people if you have the wealth. I think if you hoard it and you, you know, and you get greedy and you love it, I think that that you can get into a dangerous area there. Uh, but I don't think God wants us to be poor. I think the, you know, the whole, the, the idea of meekness, Jesus was meek, you know, um, it's, what is the, the saying for what a meek person is, it's uh, strength under control or something like that. I can't remember wh what I've heard, but I think it's, it's important to understand, you know, you got uh, meek, isn't this weak, <laughs> you know, it's not Correct. a weak, um, timid person that just gets, well, oh, just walk on me, just walk on me. You know, I don't think that that's what God would want us to do. I think he'd, he'd want us to use our talents uh, to the best of our ability. And, you know, again, you, the more you make, the more you can give back. <laughs> you know, you can that. help help a lot more people if you have money yourselves. Now, I can't let this interview go until I ask you this one final question. Is it okay? Is it a, is it an easy one? It's an easy one. It's easy, it's easy. <laughs> I think I think it's I think it's be natural to you, Rob. I think it'd be very very natural to you. Okay. Okay. Your top three best dad jokes. Oh, top three. Come okay. on, man. lay it on lay it on us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, an antenna and a satellite got married. The wedding wasn't much, but the reception was incredible. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> ah, that's good. <laughs> Ding, score, run. One for all. Give, me, give me another one. Come on. Okay, so my son said he didn't understand cloning. I told him that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, I tried <laughs> Okay. Uh, did you hear about the <laughs> did you hear about the short fortune teller that escaped from prison? No. He's a small medium at large. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's, 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 you got, there you go. You got, you got, you got, so, guys, with that being said, uh, Rob, before I let you go, any final thoughts uh, as we end this interview? Anything that you'd like to share with our seven figure squad audience of faith based, first generation hopefuls to be financially independent and uh, pursuing entrepreneurship? Yeah, I, again, perspective, I think, is important. And here, here's a Bible verse that I'm going to lay on you, just that's been on my heart lately. It comes from 2 Corinthians. It's 2 Corinthians 4, 16. It says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, 
is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Amen. Seeing the end of those mats. And that's faith. That's faith. And uh, that's awesome, brother. I appreciate this. So, guys, if you haven't done so already, purchase the book. I'll put the link below. Dad, how do I? And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to Rob Kenny's YouTube channel. Dad, how do I? And we'll put the link here in the uh, description area below. So that being said, Rob, thank you so much for your time. You've been very generous with this. Uh, my regards to your wife, my, uh, my, my tita, uh, your wife, and also my, you know, at-large cousins out there um, yeah. that are out there. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, your YouTube channel continues to grow and prosper. And you continue to reach the lives of people that are lost, needy, and need your help. That being said, man, I appreciate you. And thanks for being on the Seven Figure Squad. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Matt. And I do have to say, my my Filipino family is awesome. I, I love my Filipino siblings and my uh, my mother in law is. I call her mom. I call her mom from basically that from the time that uh, I first met her. She's been so so good to me and so motherly. She welcomed me right in. Uh, yeah, great family. If you guys are watching this, make sure you use, click, click like on our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. On behalf of our guest, Rob Kenny, I'm your money smart guy from Dallas, Texas. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.